Hello Data Vaulters. Welcome to our series of presentations providing an orientation to Data Vault 2. This is a seven part series and this video is part six where we explore automation of ETL. If you remember from our previous video, we are interested in our travel business, Data Vault Breaks. And we've analyzed a fragment of the bookings table, just one table from the booking system. We use the Data Vault 2 approach and ended up with two hubs, customer and booking, one link, customer booking, and three point in time satellites. We have three types of table, hubs in red, links in green, and satellites in blue. Because these tables have common structures and common metadata columns, they will use very similar SQL statements to load them to the data vault. We have three patterns, and we can substitute specific values into the pattern to generate each SQL statement. What values do we have to play with in the hub? Well, if you look, we have a primary key hash, some metadata, and the natural key. So we have a SQL statement like this, like this pseudocode example. We use insert ignore so that we don't overwrite any existing hubs, and that makes the statement dud impotent. Let's replace the columns with tags. All hub inserts will follow that same pattern. It's as simple as that. What values do we have to play with in the link? We have a primary key hash, which is a hash of the two foreign keys, a hash of each of the foreign keys, and some metadata. So we have a SQL statement like this pseudocode example. Like the hub, we use insert ignore so that we don't overwrite any existing hubs, making the statement idempotent. Let's replace the columns with tags. All link inserts will follow the same pattern. What values do we have to play within the satellite? Well, satellites are a bit more complicated, but we have a primary key hash which is a hash of the parent hub, or link table's natural key, some metadata, a list of payload columns, and a hash of the payload columns. The SQL to load a satellite is more compl complex, but it still follows a pattern, and you can probably work it out for yourself. I don't want to spend time here analysing that SQL, however you can see the details in the Data Vault book. So we had six tables of three types, hub, link, and satellite. And we can render the load of each down to a template. So we could store the metadata separately and generate the SQL by inserting the metadata into the template. This is how we could do this. We store the metadata separately we generate a set of insert procedure statements, one for each hub, link and satellite, and we store them in the database. We add some helper functions to enforce standard calculations, such as a hash or hash diff. Then finally, we add a parent scheduler procedure, load vault, that invokes the lower level hub, link and satellite loads in sequence. Finally, we construct a mechanism to trigger the load vault procedure. And this could be a cron tab that launches a bash script, or we could trigger a load based on the arrival of a file, or any other traditional orchestration approach. This is a simple version of a data vault, and it's robust enough to work in a real environment. However, you won't want to use it at scale. If you need to get hold of a more detailed information, you can download user group presentations from the user group website. We also offer Data Vault 2 and information governance related blogs and white papers from our company site, and these are all worth checking out. Thanks for viewing this video. See you in the next.